So a basic uh, ancestor ritual is actually very simple. No? Best time is new moon morning, um, because at that time the gate is quite open and uh, the ancestors are also generally in a good mood. And so then we just, you know, take a few things, basically the five elements. We take some earth element, which is some fruits or some flowers. We take some water for the water element. We light some lamp for the fire element. We offer some incense for the air element. And then, okay, we have our voice uh, to use for, for sound no? in the space element. And so then uh, we basically say hi, you know, grandma, grandpa, and uh, whoever you also know of your ancestors, and you even might say, and also to whomever I don't know, no? because some may be there whom you don't know, but they still might know you. And so uh, you say, how, how are you doing? You know, keep it very casual, I would say. Um, and and uh, I hope you're doing fine, and I hope I'm not doing anything wrong in your eyes. Uh, Please help me to be happy, healthy and wise and maybe find a nice, good uh, job. You know, <laughs> it might be something more practical also there that, that you can ask. And, uh, and then you say, okay, here are these gifts. No? And you put that there and you leave that there, I would say, for at least a couple of hours or maybe 24 hours. And then afterwards you bring that in nature. You don't throw it in the dustbin. You also don't eat the fruit, for example, yourself. You just put it somewhere under a tree or wherever in nature uh, the next day and that's it. You know? So it's, it is quite simple and it is quite important. You know? The um, main thing my teacher from Nepal there said very much in the beginning when I met him actually, uh, he said that to his experience as a healer, the large, you could say, uh, occurrence of, of psychological and emotional problems in Western culture is largely due to the absence of ancestor rituals. So that is quite a statement and uh, I'm sure there are also quite a lot of other things involved. No? <laughs> uh, Western society in so many ways actually is sort of gearing to create emotional and psychological problems in us. Just think of modern media and the type of work we get and so on. But definitely there is an important factor there. And yes, here largely, of course, this has disappeared. No? Maybe in November we still do something on the graves bring some flowers, uh, but that's about it in most uh, families. And so that is really not a good idea. Just imagine you are in their uh, place, you know, and, and you leave your family behind. And okay, occasionally uh, they cry about you or something, but for the rest they try to forget you as fast as possible. That's what people here do. And so that may feel quite bad. So in that way, first of all, they might not, you know, be much involved with you then also. In that way, you, know, you lack that kind of support which you could have and which they would normally be ready to give. And in the other way also, maybe some of them, if they are already a little bit unhappy and in their nature, they might also affect you in negative way. So in, in that way, it's totally advisable uh, to do that. And you look in any ancient culture and that will always be there, it will always be very important and it will be different in one culture and another. In that way, you now we here are quite free to develop our own way, precisely because there is no fixed way. I remember an Indian family where once a year they would all gather together and then they had a list of all the ancestors and their preferred food. And then they would make all that food for each ancestor a separate plate, put that all together in a very festive way in one room and close the room for 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, okay, everything would be cleared away. So just to say, okay, if that is in a family how it's done, then better also do it that way, of course, because that is also what they will expect. You know? So, but in our uh, tradition, it does not very much exist. So we can do it our own way. And uh, I've seen it in many people who started doing that. 
a change which comes and you cannot really explain it so well or link it so directly maybe no, to what they are doing there but still for me it works no? and uh, for me as a healer because okay I work a lot with the spiritual world I actually do that every day no? a little thing only but still every day I do it no? but okay normally this is not needed once every moon is a good idea no? and it only takes five minutes it's not a big thing no? and okay if um, you know your grandfather used to smoke then you give some tobacco no? or if in your family there's a tradition of having some alcohol you give a little drink also no in that way you can be creative um, yeah It can also be a little more personal, no? if maybe it is your father who passed away or somebody really close to you who you know very well, then you might really also make something specially for them. And uh, that is actually something often done in India at the so-called death anniversary. Here we tend to celebrate the uh, birthday no? of a person and some people may also continue that somehow with people who passed away that on that day I don't know they light a candle or, or do something but so in the Indian way no it is done on the date in which they passed away because it is said that at that time especially they kind of reconnect uh, to us so then maybe at that time for, I don't know, your father or something, you could really do something special and it will be much appreciated. Because you always have to remember in the spiritual world, which is the astral world, you know, material things, they do not exist. But through imagination, they can create a lot actually. So if they want a beautiful house, they can imagine it and they will have it. If they want a beautiful garden, they can imagine it and they will have it. But their power of imagination will very much depend on the memories that they have. And these memories, they tend to fade. So then maybe after a while, they don't really know what a rose looks like or how it smells or anything like that. So then whenever we offer something like that, to them it is like the blueprint which they can use to imagine that. And you give just one rose and they can imagine a field of roses. You know? So in that way, it is really appreciated. It is strange maybe huh, to say like that, but uh, they can really be, be, be very happy for that. And that is something which is also very much a standard part of any spiritual kind of healing that I do. Whenever a spiritual energy is creating some kind of problem the first thing I try to do is just to please it by giving it some of these things and then say oh please you know, leave this patient and and be happy and go your own way <laughs> um, and and in many ways that just works you know? nothing more is needed no force is needed you know if, if there is more attachment okay some force may be used but in many ways actually the gifts they are they are very much appreciated and in that way enough you know, to produce a, a different feeling. You know? Now actually you can say, no? if you are interested to start some kind of rituals to work with the spiritual world, if that is in your interest, then the ancestors are the place to start. All else is illogical as long as you do not do that. Because those are the ones most closely connected to you anyhow. And their feeling towards you can bring a lot. And yeah, you look in many old cultures, let's say more tribal cultures, very often the ancestors will be the main thing in the entire spiritual like um, practice of, of that community. And I'm not saying there may also not be some like deities or natural elements which are seen uh, as divine in, in nature. But 
ancestors will be very important. Yeah. Christianity there is somewhat at fault, no? to indeed categorize all such kind of activities as witchcraft. No? Also, let's say, people who would um, offer some flower before they cut a tree. This is also a very typical thing, which you still see a lot in many of the ancient traditions. Whenever they take something from nature, first they offer something. That for them is very natural to do. But that is also something which in Christianity would be seen as, you know, working with the devil or something. No? So in that way, yes, all these things that we used to do ourselves, let's say, in the original uh, Celtic culture, no? but okay, 2000 years back, no? uh, slowly, slowly have been weeded out, let's say, have been annihilated and replaced then only by whatever the church was offering in terms of spiritual services um, and, and no, okay, the, the November uh, habit of going to the grave is a Christian habit, no? so they somehow did canalize that desire of the people to still do something for the ancestors, but then only on that day and only on the grave and, and you know, the, this uh, yeah, monopolizing no? spirituality has been one of the major strategies of, of the Christian church. Um, and especially, I would say, of the Catholic and, and Protestant churches. Because if you look at the Orthodox Church, that's quite different. They have still kept a lot of things going um, and, and allowed much more also freedom there for the people to do by themselves. That is quite different. Anyhow, the advantage of modern society is that there is quite a lot of freedom. These days people are a lot complaining on that subject. But we have to see that, that in modern society we have gained a lot of individual freedom. And so we use that, you know, so that we follow our own opinion and not necessarily the opinion of, let's say, mainstream thinking. And in that way, nobody is going to stop us to do this. You know? Compared to, let's say, the Middle Ages, that's a very different situation. You know? uh, I imagine people there who had some kind of healing capacity in a spiritual way and could not use that talent an insight out of fear of yeah being I don't know burned alive or something. No? So that that is no longer there. We have that freedom, so we should make use of it. And this thing, like all things spiritual, are hard to believe in anyhow for anybody because the rational mind yeah always you know wants proof. Mm? But the proof is in the doing. If you think maybe what I'm saying now about an ancestor ritual might be not a bad idea for whatever reason that you can see there, there's only one thing to do, no? to give it a try. And for a few months, do this and see how your life is evolving. Of course, there's also other factors, so it's not a clear-cut kind of experiment. But still, that kind of attitude you can have, no? that freedom you have to have that attitude, whatever you believe might be a good idea, okay, you try it. And then see for yourself what it does and how it feels. Because if you do an ancestor ritual and you do it from the heart, that is actually very important, no? that even though you may a little bit feel strange or have some disbelief in it, still at that moment you try to set that aside and truly from your heart wish well to your ancestors and, you know, be there for them. And one of the things you might experience is that afterwards that feeling will come back and you will not really know how, but maybe 10 minutes after your ritual or something, you might get a wave of good feeling. That is one of the ways in which you might most directly 
do this experiment. But of course, if we start expecting these things, then <laughs> also a little tricky. So don't think about it too much. Just try and see what what happens. Definitely, if some problems exist within the family of the people who are still in the body, some quarrel maybe between brothers or I don't know, then it is also a very good idea to ask help of the ancestors in solving that. Because they might influence, at your request, these relationships. And then you might see suddenly something coming down, which before seemed quite out of control. And, okay, it seems to calm down by itself, you could say. But actually it is by the ancestors. Of course, yes, no, when a person leaves the body, there may not be so much time in between that no, event and then the new reincarnation into a new body. It's not fixed. No? It is depending on, on that individual. And it might happen very quickly, let's say, after just a week or two, or a month or something. It might also take longer. It take you know, it might take months or years even, you know. But for sure, yes, at some point it happens. And then we can ask what is the use of trying to connect to our ancestors. If anyhow, they are, so to speak, no longer our ancestors. They are somehow, you know, babies with pampers getting changed and, you know, <laughs> and, and totally forgot about us. But so... The truth is that we may seem to be here in this body, but that is actually not the case. No? We are all spiritual beings living in the spiritual world. And when, okay, we have a body, that means that we are connected to this body through a very strong no? energetic link. And uh, in that way, you know, we are using this body, like you could say, as a kind of virtual reality game. You know? If you have a very good virtual reality kind of machinery, then also it feels totally real. You know? And you feel you are in that place and you feel you are in that body of that avatar, you know? which, which then in the game you will have. So that is also the reality in our life. We are not truly here, but we are connected to this body, you know, from the spiritual world. And in that way, it feels that we are here. But so that also means that when our ancestor passes away and then after a while enters a new body, you know, still they are there in the spiritual world. And so then we can still respond within the spiritual world through other, to other spiritual beings, to which we feel connected and there of course then the ancestor connection is very strong so you don't have to worry about that they are still there and they can still listen and they can still help you whoever died even you know okay you're saying an ex-husband uh, with whom you have a child and in that way you are strongly connected yes that is true but even if you would not have a child let's say but you have a strong emotional connection, then sure, the same thing can be done. Um, and maybe very important also, if somebody dies, but something between you and that person is really unresolved, there is still anger in you, there is still anger in that person when that person goes, then that anger will stay and may affect you in a negative way. May affect your mood, may even affect, if it's a big thing, let's say, <laughs> things happening to you. It may affect your other relationships. So in that way, yes, then to do the same thing as for the uh, ancestors and offer some gifts 
and really then also from the heart try to honestly forgive from your side whatever the other did is very important and this has to be a true thing because at that moment they are not listening let's say to your words no? they are looking into your heart so if you're just parroting something but it's not real they're gonna know so then better don't do it you know but definitely something like that can be very helpful and there are cases in healing for example where i can correlate certain problems that occur in people to a certain starting time which is the same time as somebody who passed away with whom yeah the relationship was not very good so then before doing any healing I make them do such a ritual. I give them the tools needed and I explain how to do it. But they have to be ready in their heart to really again love that person and forgive whatever happens. You know, if it's an ex-husband, it means you have loved him at some time. No? So, you know, forget whatever happened and get back to that love. You know? And then from there say, oh, please, you know, forgive me for whatever I did wrong. And even maybe explain <laughs> if you feel there's an explanation still like uh, needed, uh, whatever happened and why you did this or that, and say, forgive me. And, and you know, and that can really work uh, a lot. Um, however, if you would do this, you have to keep it separate from the actual ancestors. So let's say if you would do this at the same time on a new moon morning, you use two different plates in which these gifts are being put. That is advisable. Uh, so your ancestors still feel they are respected as your ancestors, no? as your elders, no? and not mixed up with any, any friends. And I actually, myself, I had a very good friend who passed away uh, about 15 years ago now. I still do that for him. Not because there's any particular problem, not at all, but basically because I love him. No? So I like to do that. But I do it on a separate plate, a little one, separate to that. So that is a beautiful way if you had a friend or whatever who passed away to still sometimes think of them and, and give them something. No? These things are also not costing much. No? A little fruit, a little this, a little that. The quantity does not matter. No? Sometimes rich people in India, they will have these big ceremonies with you know, lots of fruits and lots of flowers and all that, but that's just for show. No? It does not change anything in the ritual. The main thing which is, should be there is the good feeling in your heart, no? the real love. No? And, and that is actually what counts. And uh, all else is yeah, useful to them, but as a blueprint. No? So the quantity does not matter. But diversity matters. You can give just one flower or you can give five different flowers. No? That's a lot more fun to them. No? So in that way you can, you can enjoy doing that. No? And they will enjoy it. <laughs>